I ran out of time before the wedding, but my plan all along was to make the chandelier retractable. I just tied the cable off to get through the wedding, but now that it's winter and there's a little bit more downtime on the farm, I wanted to get back to building a reel so I could raise the chandelier up out of the way into the rafters if I ever wanted to pull a combine or another big piece of equipment into the barn. I really try to make sure all the design choices I'm making in the barn don't take away from the practicality of the space as a workshop, since that's its main purpose. I picked up two pieces of 3 8 inch plate at the scrapyard that I wanted to make the reel out of. Back home at the shop, I got them cut in half and welded them together before taking them back down to my barn where the CNC table is. I was really excited to find the pieces of metal at the scrapyard because it was about half the cost of if I had to buy new. For the reel, I was originally thinking I was going to do something with some gear reduction and a ratcheting mechanism. I was kind of picturing a heavy duty version of a boat winch, but I just couldn't figure out a design I was happy with and I felt like it was unnecessarily complex. Then I started thinking about just a simple large wheel, which I thought could look cool just because it's so big and heavy and industrial looking. I figured it would be something you wouldn't see every day. I designed the reel in SketchUp, which is the easiest program for me to design in for whatever reason. And then I redrew the same shape in Illustrator to output the cheat code for the CNC table. Illustrator uses vectors, which is mathematical equations to draw the curves, which means there is an infinite number of points along the curve and leaves it nice and smooth. SketchUp, on the other hand, uses line segments to make a curve, and even if you increase the number of line segments to where it looks like a smooth curve, it's always going to be a rougher cut as the torch head makes a slight pause at each note along the curve. I wanted the reel to be five foot tall, which means I needed to cut it out in two pieces because it was going to be wider than my water table is. Once I got the first half cut out, I started in on the second half. And they cut great. It's a long cut time, but didn't have any hiccups. I chipped off as much slag as I could, and then I used a flat disc on the angle grinder to clean it up the rest of the way. Got it all clamped down to the table and welded one side before grinding it smooth, flipping it over, and welding the back side. I thought bending one inch rebar around the outside of the reel would work really well because rebar has a lot of uh, grippage and it'll give you something to hang on to as you raise and lower it. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to bend it though. The stuff is really stiff. I was hoping to be able to just get a starting point on the curve, but not even my pole vaulting skills could get that done. The big vise didn't even give me enough leverage. Then I had the idea to use a come along attached to both sides to ratchet it together, turning the rebar into the world's largest longbow fit for Apollo himself. I kept tightening it until the bend matched the top of the reel, and then I went ahead and welded this section. I found myself wishing I really had a ring roller while working on this. Would have done a lot better job and been a lot quicker. Once I made my way around the reel, I cut the rebar to length. I had to use the oxy torch to heat up the last bit in order to get it to match the rest of the curve. I decided to make the back side of the reel a lot smaller since its only job is to keep the cable on the reel. I cut some pieces out of the leftover scraps and welded them together before cutting out the back side. I cut some end caps for the inner piece of pipe 
that the cable will wrap around, which will hold the shaft centered and square it to the rest of the pieces. Once I figured out the distance the shaft needed to stick out on the ends, I went ahead and welded it in place. I'm learning that about a sixteenth of an inch oversize on cutting holes with the plasma cutter usually gives about the best results. It's usually a pretty snug fit by the time you factor in the bevels. I used one and seven sixteenths inch hardened steel for the shaft. Next I started working on building a frame for the reel. I wanted most of the frame to be hidden in the wall and then just a couple arms that come out from the wall and hold the outside of the reel. I wanted to strengthen the corners up a bit so I ground the weld smooth and cut out some brackets that I could weld on this one. Not sure it was necessary, but makes it look a little stronger at least. I also cut some gussets to strengthen the outside of the frame where the bearing will attach. Once I had the frame done, I stood it up and strapped it to the wooden post so I could install the reel on it. This reel was getting very heavy, and awkward too. I thought the weight would be good though. It helped balance out the weight of the chandelier hanging on it. I got the bearings bolted on, and tightened down. And then she was a spinning. There was a ton of momentum behind this thing. It just about spun forever. Now that I had it mounted, I could build the locking mechanism. I knew I had no chance of getting this thing lined up beforehand. So I wanted to wait till I had it in place and I could build it while it was all together. I cut and welded on an end plate to the locking bolt. And then I also welded a loop in place so I could padlock this thing. I thought it would be an important safety feature to be able to keep it locked up. Never know, Drake might have it out for me and try to drop this thing on me when I'm working underneath it. And then I broke it all down and put on some rusting patina on the reel and gave the frame a couple coats of clear coat 